Let's move on to other cases that are interesting facing the court right now. Homelessness uh, is in front of the court. The idea that like you have to have a right to be able to be on the street if there's no other place for you to go. Uh, what's at stake here? Where do you think it's going to go? Yeah, so this is a case coming out of a town in Oregon called Grants Pass that provides very little services for homeless people and also has made it a crime to sleep outside with a blanket. And the question is whether that violates the ban against cruel and unusual punishment in the Eighth Amendment. Um, the Ninth Circuit, which is the appeals court that has jurisdiction in the West of the United States, said years ago that it is, that cities can't provide very few services and also make it a crime to sleep outside. The rest of the country doesn't live under that legal regime, and it's easier for cities to say, you got to go, you can't sleep here, you can't put up a tent here. And the justice had a kind of philosophical discussion about sleeping. Is sleeping like breathing, something that a city or a state has to make room for people to be able to do, and if they don't have it inside, then they have to do it outside. The conservatives were skeptical about this whole idea that you would have any Eighth Amendment right to live outside. And so it seemed like at the end of argument uh, that cities are going to have more leeway to make people get up and move um, to prevent homeless people from being on the street in parks, um, et cetera. The last case I want to ask you about is this landmark Chevron case that involves to what extent uh, these major U.S. federal agencies like the EPA can make significant overarching rulings. Yeah, so this is a case that's really about deregulation. We have federal agencies, they take the laws that Congress has written and they fill in all the details with regulations. And that's how the democracy has operated really since the New Deal. The agencies have become more powerful, they do more. And increasingly, corporations are more conservative, they want less regulation, they push back. So one of the big legal rulings at the center of this, Chevron, says that if a law is ambiguous and the agency has a reasonable interpretation of it, courts will defer to the agency's reading of the law. And the idea here is that agencies have hundreds of people who work there. They're the experts. Judges are not. They know better. That is now completely up for grabs. Seems very unlikely that Chevron, as we've known it since the mid-1980s, is going to continue. And what the conservative justices seemed eager to do in this case was make it easier for corporations to challenge regulations and to have judges that are sympathetic to that point of view overrule agencies like the EPA and the SEC and the FDA, a kind of alphabet soup of Washington that for many decades we've relied on to make these rules. Um, and so the idea of the so-called deep state, uh, where you have thousands and thousands of bureaucrats that are making laws for your average Americans, but there is, again, a sense of delegitimization there. It's not just the Supreme Court. It's not just your Congress. It's also the civil servants in the United States. We're seeing backlash against that. Absolutely. And, you know, one way to think about these agencies is that they keep us safe, right? They make sure the water is clean and that the air is clean and they tell power plants you have to limit your carbon emissions. Another way to think about them is they're intruding on corporate profits and taking up too much power. And either Congress should be writing very, very clear, very uh, granular rules about what uh they can regulate. Exactly. Yeah. Or the court should be saying, we're going to figure it out ourselves and probably in a more uh, deregulatory environment.